Welcome to another episode of Search News You Can Use with me, Dr. Marie Haynes. In this episode, we're going to talk about an important part of Google's ranking systems called NavBoost. NavBoost memorizes every query that you search for and how you click on things and more. It uses that information to help Google to determine how to rank results. NavBoost is an incredibly important system. If we understand how it works, it can change our approach to how we do SEO, how we create content for the web. Although I'm going to share with you that I think Google's use of NavBoost uh, is actually currently in the process of evolving and we're going to see even more change. Let's talk about the DOJ versus Google trial. There's a bunch of information on NavBoost in this trial. The DOJ versus Google trial testimonies and uh, even more in the, the recently discovered API files, we'll talk about that in a moment, that tell us a lot about the different attributes that are used in Google's ranking systems. One of these that's mentioned uh, is NavBoost. NavBoost is what allows Google to take a list of tens of thousands of possibly relevant search results and narrow it down to to just a few hundred that might be helpful for the searcher. We're going to talk more in future episodes about how RankBrain, Google's AI brain for ranking, takes this even further in re-ranking the top results. But for today, we'll talk about NavBoost. Now, there's much more to ranking. In, in fact, at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you how I think that Google allowed us to find the API files because they knew that by the time we did the ranking, the system of how they rank results uh, is, is changed into an even more sophisticated way, uh, one that uses a multitude of signals in different machine learning systems to do just as good a job as the old NavBoost system, which I'm going to tell you about today. Um, Let's talk about this presentation called Life of a Click. This is a slide from the trial, the DOJ versus Google trial. The presentation is called Life of a Click. I've added the red boxes here. It says that there are three pillars to ranking, the document itself, the anchors, Anchors are, uh, links are labels on the web that help Google understand the web and what's connected to what and what people say, how we label things are the anchors in our links are, are very, very important. And, but what we're most interested in is this third item, user interactions. This is what users say about a document. Google says, we may use clicks as a stand-in for user interactions. User interactions include clicks, attention on a result, swipes on carousels, and entering a new query. They show us how the actions of searchers within the Google search results, reads, clicks, scrolls, mouse hovers, and even more are used. The SEO community recently discovered a massive document describing attributes that could be used for API calls to Google's cloud platform. Many of these attributes clearly relate to search and several of them mention NavBoost. So let's look at those. NavBoost stores the query, whatever keyword you search, whatever phrase you search, it stores that in an attribute that's called query. It stores information about the impressions that a website gets about the quality of clicks to a website in attributes called bad clicks, good clicks, last longest clicks, and more, including one that I'd like to know more about called unicorn clicks. The system is learning what the patterns are for a successful search for a given query. It's been doing that since 2005, so it has a lot of practice. Check out this article from Cyrus Shepard from a few years ago on Moz, where he unpacks some of the Google patents that are likely related to what we now know as the NavBoost system. Google has a patent that says that what people click on is often the best judge of relevance. Another patent talks about short clicks and long clicks when uh, somebody stays on a website rather than coming back to the search results. This is something that's also discussed in Stephen Levy's book, In the Plex, about the history of Google, which is a book I'd highly recommend reading. And there's a patent that also talks about being the last click, which is usually indicative of a good page. Now, it's not as simple as saying content that gets long clicks is definitely good because different queries represent different needs. Someone looking for a quick definition might be satisfied by one page and then turn to the results to do further research. That first page was still helpful. 
For a different search, perhaps a successful search is represented by someone who didn't return to the search results, but went on to use the information that they found. NavBoost has been learning for many years now how to use all of this information together to determine what searchers are likely to find helpful and to improve rankings. Does NavBoost use signals from Chrome? It's possible that Google uses user engagement data from activity within Chrome. We can see from Google's privacy policy that Chrome collects information about how we interact with content and ads on a page. They tell us that they collect data on the terms that we search for, what we view, what we interact with, and even what we purchase, our purchase activity. It makes sense to me that Google could put this information together to make pretty good predictions on what it is that people are likely to find helpful. After all, that's what the machine learning systems behind ranking are doing. Just like ChatGPT or Gemini predicts what word is next to say, Google's AI systems like RankBrain, DeepRank, Rank and Red BERT, and also NavBoost, they're predicting what pages are likely to be helpful. I couldn't find evidence to show that Chrome data or Android data showing what searchers do on web pages uh, is used in search. All that the documents talk about though is monitoring what people do in the Google search results. And I say that this is, this is enough. This can give Google a lot of information. Let's say I do a search for a recipe. What's a better predictor of a helpful recipe? One with lots of links pointing to it or one that has lots of people that tend to click on it? Keep it open as they make a recipe and perhaps even share, bookmark it, or return back to make it on a regular basis. It's not hard to imagine that the patterns of user engagement that can be found could correlate with helpfulness. Is NavBoost still used? There are some obvious concerns with a system that's driven so heavily by clicks. It would be quite easy to manipulate rankings if that was the only thing that mattered. Uh, you know, we did it. <laughs> Years ago, my team and I, we won a competition that was held by Wix. We had to beat another team in ranking for the phrase Wix SEO. The day before the contest was judged, we asked our audience to search the phrase Wix SEO and then click on our website. We hid pictures of John Mueller all around the site. And we had a contest that said, if you could find all of the pictures, then you would enter the contest to win a subscription to my paid newsletter. This user engagement was enough to temporarily boost our rankings and win us the competition. Now, those rankings did not last long. This boost uh, is likely given by uh, a system that I'm going to talk more about in future videos, a version of NavBoost called Instant Glue. Instant Glue helps Google understand what's relevant for fresh and changing queries based on what people are clicking on. Now, Google has measures to detect click manipulation, and today it's often difficult to get click manipulation to work for good reason. It's not something that I would recommend trying. Although many people are, we see it. This is why we see clickbait so much in Discover feeds. People have figured out that if you, you can do better in search if you can get people to click on your results. Now we have to get people to engage and to stay with them as well, and we can't be constantly annoying people. But what about content that's new? And what about content, uh, the concerns over an echo chamber? I mean, perhaps content's getting more clicks because it's ranking well <laughs> and not because it's actually better for the searcher. The trial actually talks about these concerns. They go into great detail about how Google is working to use less user data in their algorithms. The goal is to be able to use the signals on the web itself in complicated machine learning system calculations that can predict what's helpful without having to rely so much on the actions of searchers. I highly suspect that the changes that we started to see introduced with the March core update in 2024 to bring new signals into the algorithm marked a shift. Well, actually, Google told us that the March core update represented an evolution in how they determine the helpfulness of content. 
They told us that they did re-architecture work and they brought in new signals. I think many of the signals that were traditionally used in search have been brought into machine learning models to help them better predict what a searcher is likely to find helpful. I think we haven't seen the full effect of this yet, and I'm excited to see what happens with the next core update as perhaps we'll see the outcome of a new system that's able to use more signals in determining what to rank. I'm going to talk about that in my next episode. So what do we do with this information? Understanding more about the NavBoost system helps us to see just how important it is to focus on user experience. As we create content for the web, we need to be striving to be a result that people will often click on, which often involves building a brand that you um, become known for the topics that you're writing on, and then also that people go on to find consistently helpful. Remember Google's helpful content documentation? These questions are not a list of things that Google's algorithms specifically reward, but rather they're the types of things that people tend to find helpful. And now that we know how NavBoost works and uh, what it's looking for, these make a lot more sense when Google tells us to refer to these documents whenever they have a significant update. Is content original? Is it insightful? Is it the type of page that you'd want to bookmark and share with a friend? Does it provide substantial value compared to other pages in the search results? Our goal should be to be producing content that truly is the most helpful result, which is no easy task. I expect that we'll see more changes as the new systems with their new architecture and their signals continue to do their machine learning. In future episodes, we'll start looking at search results from the perspective of a searcher. Now that we understand NavBoost, even if it has changed, we know that what's important is to get people to click and to have the result that people actually wanted to find, rather than trying to SEO our way into uh, good rankings. We need to actually be the most helpful. We're going to do that in future episodes. Stay tuned, and I wish you the best of luck with rankings and with everything.